Joining us now with reaction, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich. To me, it's simple. Keep your promises. He has a pretty long list in a fairly short period of time that he's checked off. I am disappointed that after eight years of saying repeal and replace, they didn't have a bill ready that had consensus. I think they'll get it done, but they made it harder than they should have. Sure, but let's put a couple things here that you touched on. I think the swearing in of uh, Justice Gorsuch today is a huge victory for conservatism, big victory for the president. And if you think back to what the alternative would have been with Hillary Clinton, what an enormous difference. If you want a reminder of how big a difference the election made, imagine who she would have been swearing in and how radical that person would have been. But second, let's be fair. Mitch McConnell really deserves a lot of credit. Uh, while the House Republicans were floundering, he very aggressively, very calmly said over and over again, Justice Gor Judge Gorsuch is going to become Justice Gorsuch. I will figure out a way to get this done. It is going to happen. He changed history. It was a very courageous thing to do. It was the right thing to do. So Mitch McConnell deserves, I think, a lot of credit for that. I and agree. President Trump deserves a lot of credit. And by the way, remember, uh, Judge Gorsuch was on the original list during the campaign when people wondered how conservative Trump would be and working with the Federalist Society he produced a remarkable list and I think he might have two or three more justices on that list uh, before his presidency is over so it was a big day for him also today Toyota announced I think a billion dollar plus Huge. investment in the United, in the United States uh, another example of where Trump is beginning to make a real difference so I do think you see some very positive things begin to be what developed. What do you make of the palace in intrigue? That I'm very encouraged by. Well, you know that, that that you got a group of some people that are more liberal from New York than you got the the more conservative members that are surrounding the president. That there's a lot of infighting and battling for turf and territory and who ultimately impacts the president. Because my experience, having been around him and interviewing him a lot, is that he's not exactly somebody that is convinced easily that he's wrong. And I've got a, and so far, everything oh. he's, he's done has been part of his agenda and promise from the get-go. Look, look Washington, Washington reporters love gossip more than facts. They love covering, in, you know, insider junk more than covering history. But the fact is, Donald J. Trump is going to be president, not, not some staff, not some cabal, not the, quote, New Yorkers. Uh, you know, it, it, for example, the, 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 the Reince Priebus, Steve Bannon... Jared Kushner stories, I think, are way overblown. The fact is, all three of them are trying to execute the president's plan. They have the normal effort of any team trying to figure out different nuances. But it's not like there's the liberal group and the conservative group. You aren't going to last in the Trump White House unless the program you're executing is the Trump program. He is too smart. He has run too many organizations. Somebody who came in there and tried to manipulate him would last about 12 hours. Uh, because By the way, he, he, he I, I, would can, I can testify you that. I mean, How many people have been in conversations with him where you, you can't surround him and get him to do something. Uh, he just blows past it. He's, he's too powerful a personality. How many people tried to tell the president or candidate Trump not to tweet? He didn't, he didn't listen to liberals around him, conservatives around him, family around him. He made up his own mind. That's the guy that I me, know. Me, me, yeah, you, I told him what I did. <laughs> By the way, in retrospect, I like that he tweets. In retrospect, I think it's good for I him to too. tweet. So I, I think I, I was I'd wrong. I'd like 10%, 10% less would be 100% more <laughs> okay. if it was the right 10%. But, but, but that's a great example. But, but I think thinking about something deeper. Trump has been saying the same things for 30 years. Good point. Uh, you can go back and you look at interviews with, with Oprah Winfrey. You can look at when he had the Time magazine cover in uh, January of 19, or February of 1989. I mean, this is a very mature person who's thought a long time about his country. He has assembled a team. And remember, outside the White House, you got people like uh, Secretary Mattis or Secretary Tillerson, uh, Secretary Perry, the longest serving governor in Texas history. Uh, I mean, he has very strong personalities around him. And he gets on the phone. You know, when he does something in Syria, he's talking to the Saudi king next. He just took, met with the Egyptian president. Yeah. He just met, and who he talked to again today about the, the bombings this weekend. He met with the king of Jordan. I mean, he's getting information from more sources than any president I can remember. We, and he does it very actively and very aggressively. Uh, and he learns very, very fast. I think that's well said. All right, Mr. Speaker, always good to see you. Thanks for being with us.